This video is for AQA GCSE Business Studies, looking at Unit 2 and interest rates. Now, it's, it's very top, topical at the moment because um, in the news recently, Bank of England have been weighing up their options as to whether they should increase interest rates. Now, the Bank of England is the central bank for the UK, and they are responsible for setting the official rate for the market, or for the economy. Now, one of the reasons why the Bank of England are considering this is because one of their main jobs is to control price levels within an economy and they have a set target of 2% for inflation. Now what inflation is, is the, um, is the average uh, inc well, sorry, it's the increase in the average price level within an economy. So it means that if, if we're experiencing inflation, the value of your money starts to fall. In terms of being 2%, the, the, the economy or the government believe that's stable enough and therefore they, uh, they want the Bank of England to, to do everything in their power to try and control the price level. And the way they do that is via interest rates, which I'll explain later. Now, many people argue, well, what happens if the uh, inflation rate is below that 2%? Well, again, the Bank of England will have to intervene. And again, they may use interest rates. Now, one example being is let's say the inflation rate was at 0.5%. Uh, that means that uh, price levels are still increasing, but they're increasing at a much slower rate than the 2%. However, it's very close to zero, and it's very close to start to entering deflation. Now, deflation is the complete opposite of inflation, and that's when price level, the average price level starts to fall and the value of your money goes up. Now, many people think, well, surely that's a good thing, but if you consider it this way, if you know that prices are going to continuously fall, then you're in a position to think, okay, let's hang on a minute. I'm not going to buy that anymore. I'm not going to buy, oh, I'm going to wait until prices fall further, and then I'm going to buy that product. Now, the, the more consumers wait, the less demand there is in the economy, and that affects the economic growth. So again, like I said before, the, the Bank of England and the government as well believe that 2% is the right rate. Currently, at this moment in time, uh, we're between 3 and 3.1% in terms of inflation. So it is exceeding that, uh, that rate of 2%. So that could be a reason why they want to increase uh, interest rates. Now let's have a look at uh, how interest rates can impact the price level of an economy. Now this diagram shows you how the, uh, the Bank of England's decision to, to change interest rates can impact the whole economy in leading to controlling the price level. So the first thing that's really, really important is that you know the definition of interest rates. Now, there's two components to interest rates, and usually one of them go, kind of goes um, understated. So the, the definition is... They are the rewards for saving and the cost of borrowing. And usually students just think about the cost of borrowing and they forget about the rewards for saving, but they're both crucially important when thinking about the impacts of interest rates. So let's imagine the Bank of England decide that they're going to increase interest rates. So the rate of interest is going to go up. Now remember, they set the rate for the whole marketplace. So therefore the high street banks will then follow on from that and they'll increase their interest rates. Now, they'll increase, they increase their interest rates on the likes of um, the credit that they lend out, and that, is, that includes mortgages, it includes credit cards, loans, overdrafts, anything that um, the bank issues to, to customers and uh, which, which involves credit, the cost of that will go up. But they'll also possibly increase the interest rate on savings, so that means if customers have got savings accounts, which they, they get interest issued to them, then that will go up. Now, that has a, that has a massive impact on um, customer behavior. So let's think about, first of all, saving. Now, maybe you, uh, you're you not a saver. Maybe you've, um, you've, you've decided in the past there's no point in saving because you're not getting much of a return. But now the interest rate's gone up, you may think, actually, it's worthwhile to save because I'm getting more money um, in return. If I keep my money in the bank account for a certain amount of time, I'll get a higher rate of return now based on that. But if you're saving, what you're not doing? Well, you're not spending. And therefore, you're going to the Bank of England and the high street banks are controlling the amount that you are spending by encouraging you to save. So the more you save, the less you spend. Now, if you think about the cost of borrowing as well, 
You used to have maybe customers who, a lot, lots of customers are in some form of debt. Uh, that debt can be managed quite easily, but sometimes maybe that debt gets out of control. But if the rate of interest goes up, then the cost of that debt is also going to go up. So imagine if you are thinking of getting a mortgage and then suddenly you see that interest rates have risen. That might put you off from buying that big, uh, that big purchase because it's going to add uh, a significantly higher cost onto already a big valuation. If you think of getting a loan maybe, then again it might put you off from getting that loan. If you've got credit cards or if you've got overdrafts already, they might have a variable interest rate. And what that means is, is when you signed up to these, um, the interest rate at that time might not be the interest rate that you have today. So for example, when the rate of interest goes up, maybe the interest on in your credit card and overdraft, etc., might also go up as well. So that means every time you use your, use your credit card, you're gonna have to pay more back. Every time you dip into your overdraft, you might have higher interest charges. So that's going to discourage people from actually wanting to borrow. Now the whole reason why you borrow is to spend. And therefore, if you're not borrowing, you're not going to be spending. So then we get to the next level, and that's all to do with confidence. And confidence is absolutely crucial. We're going to focus on consumer confidence, but it also has a direct impact on business confidence as well. Now, confidence can really get an economy ticking. It can, get, it can help with economic growth. But if you start to think that your costs are going up as a consumer, and therefore you might lose a little bit of confidence within the market. I've already said that borrowing will go down, savings will go up, and therefore what you'll probably experience is that consumer demand will also go down. There's types of goods that maybe they didn't mind putting on a credit card before or they may have got a loan for. Maybe they think of getting a new car, getting a house. Those type of purchases might be put on hold until we know what's happening with interest rates. Now in doing so, what that means is that there's less demand for the goods and the services that businesses provide. But the businesses have already been supplying those goods, supplying those services. So what you find is actually it it kind of reduces the demand, which means that there's more excess supply now. Now, if there's excess supply, what you tend to find is there's less pressure on resources. And because there's less pressure on resources, it starts to bring the price level down. And therefore, inflation also goes down. Now in terms of how that impacts the price level, that, this will probably make more sense when we look at the opposite way, when we look at if interest rates fall, so I'll do that in a minute. But let's just look at business confidence. Now if you can imagine that businesses also have loans, they also have uh, different types of credit, uh, and therefore their costs of production might go up. Also what you might find is businesses were thinking of maybe expanding, they might put that on hold because it's more expensive to expand now. They've also experienced uh, lower consumer demand because customers are not borrowing anymore and they're saving more. So business confidence is also going to go down. Therefore, if business con uh, confidence is going to go down, you may even say that they might start to make cutbacks. You may even find that they make a couple of redundancies and staff might lose jobs, which worsens confidence even further. But if businesses were thinking of buying new capital goods, new machinery, new equipment, new property, then that is, again, as I've said before, it's going to be put on hold. So investment is also going to stop. Now, when businesses invest, they're injecting money into the economy. And if that money is lost and that money is no longer injected, that can also help to reduce the price level. Now remember, the whole reason for this is because at the moment the inflation level is too high and the economy is growing too fast. So therefore, this is all intentional. This is what the Bank of England wants uh, to happen to help the economy. So let's imagine now that um, the inflation rate is really low and we're trying, to, we're trying to encourage higher growth. This is what they do. So at the moment, the inflation rate is, is low and the Bank of England, and maybe, maybe the economy is not doing very well, maybe we're experiencing a recession and there's negative growth and there's high levels of unemployment. And what the Bank of England wants to do is they want to accelerate growth and get consumers spending again and get businesses investing again. So what they might do is they, they might reduce the rate of interest. Now again, as I've said before, what that means is the, uh, there'll be a lower reward for saving now 
because uh, customers who are saving with banks won't get as much of a return, but the cost of borrowing will also go down. So that means saving will go down, but borrowing might go up. Now, a reminder, if you're not saving, then you're spending. If you're borrowing, then you're borrowing to spend. So what that means is, with this, uh, with, um, this going down, consumer and business confidence might go up. Businesses might be more confident because their costs are lower and they might be more confident in investing today because the interest rates are low, so therefore they might invest. If they invest, they might expand, um, they might become more productive, they might get better um, at how they're operating, uh, and again, it might lead to higher levels of employment. So again, that brings up more consumer confidence. So consumer confidence would also go up. With uh, consumer confidence going up, and investment going up, then there's going to be um, more demand within the economy. So now the reason why that causes inflation, or it could cause inflation, is because now there's less excess supply. Because if you think about it from this point of view, if you've got lots and lots of supply and very little demand, then there's no pressure on the resources, there's no pressure on the supply, so therefore there's no reason to put prices up or there's no reason to stretch prices and in fact what tends to happen is prices fall. But if you start to, to kind of take up more of that supply via demand or if that demand even goes in excess of supply so there's not enough supply to meet demand then maybe some of these resources become a little bit scarce. And with scarcity what you tend to find is prices start to go, uh, up, start to go up. So again what you'd experience is inflation going up. But again, it's intended, uh, it's intentional, sorry, uh, the reason why they're doing this is because they want to avoid deflation, they want to make sure it reaches that 2% target.